Do you want to use an analog phone with your 3CX? Do you want to make it easier for a family member to use 3X? Well, stay tuned, and I'm going to show you how to do this. Welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter, your home for all things relating to smart home technology. In this episode, we're going to talk about how to use an analog phone with your 3CX PBX. Hi, I'm Ron Nutter, and we're going to be working on this together. This content is also available as an Amazon flash briefing or podcast. Please go to techbytes.withronnutter.com for more information. For any items mentioned in this episode, there are affiliate links in the description. If you click on these links, I will get a small commission, but that won't affect the price you pay for the item. If you want to get notified when new content Content is uploaded, please click on subscribe and enable notifications. Now here's what we're going to be covering in this video, and that's how to use an analog phone with 3CX. First, we're going to go over the required items, then we'll talk about testing the GrandStream 801, and then we'll talk about configuring it, and then lastly, do some testing to make sure that everything is working all right. First question you're probably going to ask is, if I'm putting in an IP-based phone system, why do I care about an analog phone? Well, there's two good reasons. One, you may need to tie in a fax machine. Now for this video, we're going to concentrate this on solely as an analog phone. Faxes are a little bit different, but that's beyond what we're going to be testing at this point. The other reason is sometimes you've got a remote location, say out in the back of a warehouse, back of the building, where you really doesn't justify getting an IP-based phone. And if you've got a $12, $15 phone from pick your favorite retailer, then that's going to be the easiest thing to do. Because then you can run that phone line way the heck out there and it's probably probably not going to have any problems. What we're looking at to do all this is the Grandstream HT801. Now there is an 802 and that basically means it can handle two analog phones. For the purpose of what we're doing here, this is going to be just a single line situation. So there's three things you'll plug into the back. The yellow jack is where the phone goes. The blue jack is where network is going to plug in. And then you've got a uh, mini USB, I believe it is. Now the reset button is important to note. This is a fairly tight space if you are going to have to reset this box. And I did several times when I was researching this video. Video, you'll need something very narrow and very stiff to get into it. What you'll need to keep in mind is these three indicators on the top of the HT801. The top one is power. The right one says it sees the network. So you're not going to be able to get this manageable on the network or even talk to it until that world icon lights up. And that's going to take a couple of minutes after it starts up. This is not the world's fast starting device. It's less than $40. So really not bad. The handset icon is going to be an interesting thing to know. Before you get this provisioned on the 3CX PBX, it's going to be dark. But when you pick up the handset, and we'll, we'll need to do some testing with this just to make sure that the handset's talking to the HT801, then you will see it light up when the handset's off hook. Other than that, it will stay dark. Once we've provisioned it on the 3CX, then you will see the icon come up as soon as it gets powered up and completes its network setup. So that will be an indication that it has been provisioned. Now, to get everything configured is not that big of a deal. I will admit the first set of directions that I found didn't exactly give me the right picture. In all fairness, they were probably written a revision or two back of 3CX. So let's go ahead and switch over. You'll see by default, I've done nothing at this point. Now, I, full disclosure, I do have the 3CX and the HT801 on the same local network. It did, 3CX did find it. So that's good because it does give us the IP address to get into the management console. If you don't see it, there is another way. If you pick up the handset and I'm going to hopefully be able to get this to where uh, you can hear it. Okay, there we go. You're hearing the dial tone. Okay, so when you pick up the dial, when you pick up the phone, if you... Okay, you can probably just barely hear that, but that at least there's a way you can get into it. And there's there's some commands I'll put in the description that gives you a little more idea of what's going on. But I would encourage you to get the both user manual and the administration manual. Once you've got the IP address, you will just type in by default, it uses HTTP. So HTTP colon slash slash and the IP address, and it will eventually fill this in. By default, it will use admin as the pass. While you can change that, that gets handled for you as far as as a part of the provisioning process. And you can see right now it says, 
is not registered. And this is a good thing to check to see if you do need to get a newer version of firmware. So that's about all we can really do at this point. That's we've verified that we are talking to the internal part of the HT801. And we've got this up and running. So really that's about as much as you can do. The bulk of the configuration process is actually going to take place on the 3CX. Even though it's showing up under phones, that's not where you go configure it. So we'll go under advanced FXSDECT is where we'll do the work. But what we want to do now is set up an extension for it. Otherwise, this is going to be a very short conversation. So I'm going to say 30 and I'm going to do grand stream HT801. You can call it whatever you want to, but I'm, with the setting I'm using here in the lab, then that's what I'm going with. Now, once we've got the extension set up, we'll go back down here under FXXDECT, say that fast three times, click on add, forgot something here. Let's go back up to phones where I told you not to go. We want to copy the MAC address because that's needed for the configuration. So we'll go back here to FXXDECT. We'll click on the add button, brand, grand stream, and they'll go down here, HT801. If you try to do this under the regular phone section, you will never find the HT801. Trust me, I looked and it got a little frustrating. So we'll paste in the MAC address and everything looks fine there. And extension, we will assign it grand stream there. Okay, that looks good. We've done as much as we can on 3CX. This is the part that is gonna make it easier for you because it's gonna be a real hair puller if you try to do it any other way. Click on this provisioning link, and save link as, and I'm gonna put this in the directory that I know what's gonna be looking for it. And let me take that one out of there because that's just where I was doing some testing. And that way that's saved. Set to go. Okay, you will go under, we're now switched over to the HT801. You'll click on advanced settings, scroll down here to where it says upload configuration from local directory. And then we'll choose file. And then we've got, so that's selected and then click upload configuration. Now we're gonna get a screen here in just a few seconds. It says to take about 250 seconds. It's not kidding. It will take a while. This is not the fastest device. So it's actually, I'm looking at it right now and it is churning away. Once it starts a reboot process and it will start, I mean, it does have to reboot. Then you will see the network icon go out. Then it will come back. Now it may come back fairly quick. As soon as you can get this screen up and running and you should also notice on the HT801 that all three icons are now lit. This is just a case now of picking up the phone and I'm gonna switch over here to one of the other extensions I've got set up and we'll just dial it. And there we go. That says it's configured and up and running. It couldn't be much simpler than that. Something to keep in mind. If you try to go into the HT801 after you've configured it for 3CX, you're not gonna be able to get into it anymore because part of the configuration changes to where the password, the admin password used to get in now has changed, which actually is a good thing. So if you've got somebody who's playing around who thinks they know a lot about it, it prevents them from getting in because they're going to have to have access into the 3CX console. Where you find your password is you go under FXSDCT, then we'll click that. And then if you go down here where it's defined, where it says device web page password and click on the little I, that's what gives you your password. And then you go with that into here. Once you've got that password, now you can see it's got the user ID configured. It says on hook. It at least tells you that it is set up. HT801 is a handy little device. It, it lets you put a phone out somewhere and not advertise the kind of phone system you got, although some people will figure it out, but that's not the point of it. This is to let you use analog phones or fax machines, anything that expects an RJ11 and doesn't have a network connection in it. So this will get you up and running. Then you've got one more thing you can tie into the 3CX PBX to get it up and running and getting it to work the way you need it to. If you're watching this on YouTube, you will see videos on the screen that are similar to the one you've just watched or other content that YouTube thinks you might be interested in. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button, thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe and enable notifications. We'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.